The multi-bead assay has been optimized for use in 96 well filter plates, which will be used for our demonstration today. Alternatively, the assay may be performed in microtubes or V-bottom plates, but these formats have not yet been validated. Before running any assay, please be sure to familiarize yourself with our chapter on using a vacuum manifold. Correct pressure settings throughout the protocol are absolutely critical to ensure proper washing and recovery of beads, as well as maintaining the integrity of the filter plate. Improper vacuum settings may cause plate leakage and subsequent loss of beads, or cause the beads to become trapped in the membrane pores. Once you have become comfortable with the vacuum manifold, you may begin using your assay. Be sure to refer to the assay layout sheet to determine the number of wells you will be using, and place a plate sealer over the unused wells to facilitate the efficient vacuum filtration during the plate washing steps of the protocol. It is important to pre-wet the plate before beginning the assay. Pipette 100 microliters of extracellular assay buffer to the bottom of each well that is being used. Aspirate with a vacuum manifold and tap the plate firmly on a lint-free paper towel to remove any residual buffer that may cling to the bottom of the plate. We are now ready to populate our plate with assay components. It is very important to work with your plate on a hard surface or even atop a normal microtiter plate. Placing your multi-bead plate on an absorbent bench pad may cause loss of standard or sample due to the wicking nature of the absorbent material. First, pipette 25 microliters diluted capture bead cocktail to the bottom of all wells being used. Next, pipette 50 microliters of extracellular assay buffer to the bottoms of the S0 or 0 picogram per mil wells. Now we can pipette 50 microliters of standards 1 through 7 to the bottoms of the appropriate wells. For information on generating the serial dilution of 7 standards, please see the included literature as well as our chapter on preparing your standard curve. An important note here, be sure to include an extra replicate of the first standard as designated by the assay layout sheet. This additional standard will be used in setting up your flow cytometer. Finally, we can pipette 50 microliters of our samples to the assigned wells. If your multiplex includes acosinoids, as the aplex inflammation panel we are demonstrating today does, your next step will be to add 25 microliters of your previously paired acosinoid PE cocktail to the bottom of each well that is being used. If, however, your multiplex does not contain the acosinoid targets, pipette 25 mic microliters of extracellular assay buffer 1 into each well instead. The total volume of all wells should now be 100 microliters. We are now ready for our first incubation. Seal the plate with a plate sealer and shake for one hour at room temperature. The contents do not need to be shielded from exposure to light as the conjugate does not exhibit properties of photobleaching throughout the duration of the protocol. Furthermore, wrapping the plate in a light protective material is much more likely to wick the well contents from the plate itself, drastically altering your results. One hour has passed and we are now ready to remove the contents from the wells and wash our beads. This is done using the vacuum manifold. Leaving the plate on the manifold under the appropriate vacuum of 2 inches mercury, add 200 microliters of wash buffer to each well to wash the beads. Repeat two more times for a total of three washes. If a well seems to filter slowly, or not at all, vigorously pipette the contents up and down to remove the clog, taking care not to puncture the membrane, as demonstrated in our assay tips chapter. After the final wash step, remove the plate from the vacuum manifold and tap the plate firmly on a lint-free paper towel to remove any residual buffer. We are now ready to move on to the next incubation step. Add 100 microliters of the previously prepared cytokine antibody cocktail to each well. Seal the plate as before and incubate for one hour at room temperature. During this incubation, it is advisable to prepare your flow cytometer for sample acquisition. Now that another hour has elapsed and we finished the second incubation, we will repeat the exact same wash procedure as we had done after the first incubation. The final step of the protocol before loading the samples onto the flow cytometer is to resuspend the well contents in 250 microliters of wash buffer. Equilibrate the solution by pipetting up and down three times within the well, taking care not to push the pipette tip through the membrane. Transfer beads immediately to a 12 by 75 millimeter tube for individual analysis with the flow cytometer. However, if your instrument is equipped with a microtiter plate adapter, please follow the manufacturer's instructions for reading the contents directly from your 96 well plate. Your samples are now ready to be analyzed with a flow cytometer. As each instrument can significantly differ from the next, please follow the flow cytometer setup section of the written protocol to proceed with your analysis. Your multibead assay will come with a thorough protocol for performing the assay, as well as details on setting up your flow cytometer and analyzing your data. It will also include an assay layout sheet to help you set up your standard curve, populate your plate, 
and add the right reagents at the right step throughout the protocol. Additional support can be found at www.assaydesigns.com by contacting our technical support team and within the help guides of our multi-bead analysis software.